Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, I'm Dodge. I'm Andy, and we are going to be talking a little bit about Horus Heresy Legions, which I've spent the last few days having a player on the phone. When he's supposed to be working. Yeah. Can't, can't get him off it. It's, it, and it is, uh, I will say, it's a good little game, um, very reminiscent of your traditional sort of tabletop card games, um, yeah. like Magic the Gathering, that sort of way on, that sort of way on. But yeah, um, with it being on um, computer, like Android, I iOS, etc., uh, alone, they get to put in the uh, really cool effects like explosions and things. Yeah. Uh, so I also it. A lot of it's automatic for you. You don't have to, you know, like yeah. a, a regular card game. You don't have to pull out tokens and other random stuff. So it's all, it's all very, uh, very elegant, very cleverly designed. Uh, it's designed to be about a ten-minute game, um, and uh, at the minute, there's only four uh, starting factions you can work with. Uh, each one of each has two or three separate characters to be your army commander, which represents yourself. Uh, so here, um, this is me talking to Andreas. Yep, and uh, we'll show you what we shot. Yep, we'll see you in a bit. So, uh, here I am, I'm uh, Andy from Big Max, and you are? Andres Tallos from Evergill. Okay, and this is the Horus Harris Allegiance, so what, yes. that, what can you tell me about it, what is it? So, it's a mobile game. Yeah. Um, that we've developed in partnership with Games Workshop, obviously. It's all based around the Horus Heresy. Yeah. So we've been um, really focusing on bringing in all that setting and all those famous characters and the legions that took part in Horus Heresy into a card format in right. such a way that fans of card games can actually feel like they're playing with their favorite characters. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, what sort of characters will we, will we expect to see in uh, this game? Man? So we've started with the very beginning of the heresy, like following the novel. So it all starts on Eastman 3 with wow. characters like Glocken, Avadon, Horus. All the, actually, we have the four legions that took part in Eastman 3. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Emperor Children, the World Eaters and the Death Guard, aside from the Sons of Horus. Plus quite a few Mechanicum troops and Imperial Army and even Chaos troops in there. Okay. Um, and then all the other legions will be added uh, to the game over time. The idea is to sort of follow the chronology of the novels. We go then to Isma 5, Path, Prospero, all those famous wow, battles. that sounds really interesting. And this is, um, what's, how, how does it work? Is it sort of a Magic the Gathering sort of style game where it's collectible or is it a, a base box that sort of idea? No, it's, um, so it's a collectible card game. Uh, there are a lot of elements that people will recognize from other games like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone or some other favorites, some of the other famous games. Um, it does have a very nice like new feel to it because um, opposed to those other games, this one really is optimized for mobile, it's mobile first, so we've put a lot of emphasis on things like match duration, we want it to be around 5 minutes, uh, yeah. no more than 10 at most, um, there's a lot of strategy that goes in there, but there's, there's many new mechanics, like having your warlord in the battle from the very beginning, attacking from turn 1, and when troops attack your warlord, they take damage, and that's actually pretty new to this kind of uh, genre. And so is it going to be uh, online, is it uh computer only or is it going to be card format as well at the moment it's just digital and it's uh, mobile uh, yeah. we obviously are thinking about other platforms for later on but yeah, yeah. at the moment it's mobile only it's android and ios and when is this due out so it's already released on android on early access so it's currently on open beta and we don't have an exact date yet but it's now a matter of weeks until we go into full release in both android and ios so soon very soon. Okay, thank you for your time, and we're going to go on to Dodge having a bit of a play test, um, having a go at this. Fantastic, okay? thank thanks you very you. much. Cheers. Sorry, these... Okay, so Andres is uh, now going to talk us through the game. All right, so let's start the battle just to give context. Um, this is Captain Loken, it's, it's your initial character when you go into the game. You're playing through the events on Eastman 3. And actually, this is the battle that at the beginning there's a campaign, a single player campaign against the AI for people who are into the game or into the novels. It's a way to replay. It's going to have a multiplayer option as well. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's, uh, the game is primarily multiplayer. It's only at the beginning that you play against the AI. Um, I guess it gives you a taste of the game. And how exactly. To play. That's, uh, it's a sort of extended tutorial on the one hand but also a way for players who may not be so familiar with the Horus Heresy yeah. to learn a bit about what happened. So if, if, you, if you know you nothing like about the Horus Heresy as a standalone game, yep. do, you, do you reckon this would still draw in some uh, good interest? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, a lot of card games can do that. 
Uh, we're pretty confident, like based on the players that we already have in the game, many of them are not really, like, obviously most are either Horus Heresy or at least Warhammer fans, but not everyone is. Um, still, they seem to be enjoying it very much. Um, it does have this extended like campaign at the beginning that gives you some background um, information about what happened. Um, like right now, this battle um, is a bit special. It's explaining this is the moment when Horus actually bombards Eastman Three, yeah. and then you have Loken and the loyalist troops um, ducking for cover, trying to get entrance into a bunker uh, because the bombardment is about to happen. Oh, the bombardment, the um, it, the plague bombardment. Exactly, the bombardment. I like, love I love that book. I don't really want to spoil too much to people. Yeah, people yeah sorry. Knows, spoiler but. alert for anyone who isn't up that far on the Horus Heresy yet, but. Yeah, I mean, people who haven't read the books, it's also true, if they play the game, they may get some, like, um, uh, I don't know, spoiler <laughs> on the yeah. books, but still, they are worth reading, by all means. Now the books are standalone anyway. We're, I think me and Andy are like 15, 16 back, uh, yeah. books through, because we work all day in the studio, so we just whack on an audio book and... It's well. It's uh, the amount of books that are out already, and audio books and everything. It's uh, it's amazing the amount of context and lore. So, so can you talk us through uh, very what, quickly what, what we've got on the screen? And, yes. Uh, so the most important thing, first of all, is your warlord. Okay. This yep. is Loken. It's your initial warlord. You can get other warlords afterwards, but you start with Loken, and this character has attack two. Yep. And these are the two stats: attack and health. It has 27 health now. And that's the enemy warlord in the middle, which in this case has zero attacks, yep. a bit special because of this particular uh, mission, and in this case, tw thir 23 health. Okay. Now, the first warlord to get to zero health loses the match, right? Yep. So the goal of the game is to get the enemy warlord to zero health. So who, who's this behind the warlord? That is a troop that, is, um, that your opponent has deployed to help him in bringing down your warlord. Yep. We also have troops that we can deploy. So these cards, which are in our hand, they include troops, like this is a tank, um, a predator tank. Deal three damage to enemy warlord. That's the special ability of the card. Yep. It has nine attack and six, uh, six health. Now, it also has eight uh, cost, energy cost. You start ah, there's a, there's a cost for playing exactly. things. Exactly. So what uh, the resource that you need to play the cards is your energy. You start with two energy, yep. and it goes up by one every turn. So increasingly, as the is, battle progresses... Is there, is there uh, cards that help you gain more energy, I'm guessing? Yes. I thought yes. there would be. Indeed. Um, and the point is, at the beginning of the game, you can only play small things, a small, like, relatively... You've got to build uh, up the energy. Yes. And as it goes up, um, you can increasingly bring in the big guns. I think like that will give a... Um, good sense of drama to it you're starting yeah. off with small troops and sending in your big tanks you're countering with bigger tanks and yes and i can see that actually actually playing really well it's just escalating into full-scale war i yeah. can see that being very interesting and it makes the game actually fairly exciting because since the warlords are in play and they have attack you are all the time kind of taking damage so as the game progresses your warlords both warlords are getting fairly low so there's more need health. to defend him. exactly so what you can do for example is bring cards like oh, we don't have any card right now that has um, a front line it's an ability that protects your other units from being attacked okay. so if you have a front line unit it defends your other units you also have tactics like uh, this one that will deal damage to a uh, vehicle or a bit less damage if it's a different troop it's a crack grenade so yep. two damage is actually enough to kill that enemy troop so we'll use this to um, kill him before it has a chance to attack us with five attack, which is pretty strong, and then we'll attack with our warlord. So every turn, you are taking these decisions on whether you want to attack, which enemy you want to attack, and whether you use cards, right? Besides your cards, which are troops and um, tactics, so right now, for example, we have five energy. We could get this troop, which costs three energy, okay? And it's a two, three, and it has an ability as well. And then some troops, most warlords and also some troops have abilities that you can use instead of attacking, and okay. those cost energy as well. So for example, Loken can deal 2 damage for 2 energy. So we'll use this ability to target that enemy troop. I like that targeting system, there's no, you know, it's all, you've got it on Twitch screen, there's no mucking about, it's like you hit you yeah. with this, um, simple stuff. And then when you don't have any more troops that can attack and you don't have any more energy, you just pass the turn. Um, a pretty like innovative thing here uh, for digital card games is that your troops, like this one, can have abilities as well that you can use instead of attacking. Um, which means when you're building the deck before going to play, you have to take into account 
um, the energy that your, cash, your cards cost, but yeah. also the energy you will need to play their abilities. It seems like a, a little bit of practice will be needed to get good at this one. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, well, there's um, an important thing to note is there's two game modes. There's the normal game mode, uh, which is ranked, and you come in with your own deck and your own cards and yep. just try to beat the opponents online. But then there's another game mode, which are time-limited events, where you don't play with your own cards. Instead, you go in and you choose a constructed deck from a, a pool of decks that changes every two weeks. Do you think you're going to branch out into actual cards or just stay digital? Well, that's, uh, that's certainly not something that will happen in the very short term. Um, but it's something we actually as the developers would love to see because we've obviously played a lot yeah. of physical card games and just there's something about the being able to hold the yes, cards and build the deck um. I know at the same time it's also true that we are using some like we are taking advantage of the digital format as much as we can and there's some mechanics that we use that probably wouldn't um, look as good on, on a physical format yeah. so for example um, there's an ability a mechanic which is the mark of chaos so you can put a mark of chaos on the troop, and that's like a blessing from the chaos gods. That's okay? cool. And it gets a random blessing from one of the four chaos gods. It can get the uh, corn, and it gives him a uh, troop extra attack, or it can be the uh, blessing of Nargle, and it makes it poisonous. Um, and then once, you, if you manage to get all four blessings of chaos into a troop, yeah. it will transform into a demon prince. I like that. That's a cool concept. Um, oh. Now, that would be a bit hard to do on... A physical format so that whole demon prince concept that's i like that give them all four marks it's very it's very to the 40k universe and to the books and and to the stories yeah um i might have to check this out at some point <laughs> you're gonna have to you have to send me some details tomorrow although i do have your card absolutely um, yeah i mean one important thing to note is like we are big fans of of the horus heresy as well and and we are trying to really make it feel like you are in that universe when you're playing this game so for example the mechanics for each legion feel very different and feel very much like what you would expect like say the sun's forest um go straight from the th from the throat so they have a lots of direct damage you can use to try to take down the enemy leader yeah. um the emperor children on the other hand are much more combo oriented so they have uh, a perfection mechanic that triggers if you use the exact amount of energy at the right okay. time so you have to be thinking much more like how do i combine my different cards to use the right amount of energy what, every what time about Zinch, though? ah Zinch hasn't really come into play yet because the thousand suns are not in there yet so we are keeping lots of uh, ideas there in the uh, on the the fridge until we get to that point oh, um, I'm but, looking forward to seeing what that is but you know I'm probably gonna I'm gonna, we're gonna round off and everything and um, this guys does seem like a very interesting game how available is it to the public right now okay so it's going to be available on both iOS and Android yep. at the moment it's already available on Android on early access so you can already find it on the Google Play Store um, it's still on an open beta yeah. There will be no resets though, so people who are already playing and getting cars, they will keep them once yeah. the game is in full release. Um, there's no set date yet, but it's now a matter of weeks until the full release hits. That's going to so, be interesting. Um, we invite everyone who's interested in the game to follow us on Facebook or just uh, on the website. Um, I'll try and post those links in the video for everyone we interviewed today. That'd be amazing, thank you. Okay. Um, you've been great. Thanks for explaining everything to me. My pleasure. Thanks to you. Catch you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.